Hi everybody and thanks for taking the time to watch this presentation. This is a technical presentation on the Fanville i10 Mini Intercom. This presentation will be running through the hardware, it'll be running through how to connect it up to your network and get the IP addresses, and also be talking about the browser and the programming functions. If you are looking for uh, the sales section, there is a separate sales presentation which runs through the various applications and ways that you can use the i10 in some of your sales. So let's kick off. First of all, there is two models, the i10 and the i10V. The i10 is purely an audio um, intercom unit. The i10V has a camera on board so it can do audio and video. The i10s are intended for indoor use. They have an IP54 rating and are, it says waterproof, but basically are within reason moisture proof and dust proof. They are not intended to be in wet environments or um, used uh, on an external building. Basically it wall mounts or you can actually flush mount it as well. The i10s have got two power modes that you can use. First of all is the PoE of course, and secondly it does have an input for a DC power source. If you are using your i10 in an um, in external door or security um, application, it, we do suggest that you run your switch and routers or etc. whatever you have using a UPS to maintain power supply in case there is a power cut. When you open up the box of the uh, i10, what you're going to find inside is the actual mini intercom unit. You'll find a terminal, a screw terminal connector which plugs onto the uh, board. There is a quick installation guide, a mounting template, and a, some screws and a mini screwdriver to uh, connect the wiring up to the connector that comes with the box. Just a note, if you're looking for the quick installation guide, the full administration manual and data sheets, for the i10, please look under the Everly website, so that's everly.co.nz, or the Fanville New Zealand site, which is fanville.co.nz. If you look under the uh, product section, you'll find that it has all the manuals and documentation there, and uh, we generally will keep that section update with the, um, the latest and greatest documentation. If you look at the two units, the i10 and the i10V, basically very similar. They've got a speaker and a microphone, a dial answer button, but the i10V also has the extra IP camera. Dimensions is a very small and compact unit, basically 88mm squared and 31mm deep. When you disassemble the unit you'll find that the front cover um, basically lifts or is because it's clipped on to the main body so if you pull one corner um, you'll see there's like a little finger recess, recess on the side you pull that off then you'll see the main body there's four screws that hold the main body to the back shell which can be screwed to the wall using two screws. If you are going to use a um, inbuilt unit essentially you're cutting a hole in the uh, whatever you're going to flush mount it on and um, screw the four screws to to that with the um, and you can still use the back shell to protect the um, electronics etc. If we have got the um, i10 unit op open this is fundamentally what you'll see if we look at uh, point number one here we will see that that is your PoE and network cable connection and then we've got the strip of um, raised pins off the um, main circuit board. That's where that blue connector you saw in a previous slide went. Now what they're basically going to do is, uh, if you're going to use an external power pack, that's a 12 volt 1 amp input, you've got a series number 3 here, we've got a series of um, circuit output connections. Now there's three of them because one's a common and one's um, a normally open and a normally closed type relay. So this is this this is for the relays for unlocking doors or securing uh, mag locks etc. So two options normally open circuit or normally closed circuit. And then on number four we've got a input interface. Now this can be used as like a push button or trigger to uh, trigger a call etc. 
So again, the screw terminal can put in there, it can screw the, the, the wiring in. When you plug in your unit, by default the, um, the I-10s are set to DHCP. Okay, so it's got basically three methods that you can find your IP. Method number one is that there is a tool that we can download, which is a FanVol um, scanner, and that essentially scans the LAN network that you're on and will find any FanVol equipment that is has been plugged in. Please note that the scanner can sometimes fail if the network has actually blocking any scanning, etc., and will only scan across the um, uh, the VLAN or the flat LAN that the um, I-10 is connected to. If you've got um, multi VLANs and they're plugged into the wrong VLAN, you are not going to find it using the um, basic scanner. Method two, which is quite handy, is that you press and hold the call key for um, three seconds and you'll hear a, um, a series of beeps and then once you hear that series of beeps you can then release it, <coughs> the button, and quickly press it. Just to give you an idea, I've actually got one here sitting next to me. I'll just see if we can put it up mic to the microphone. You can see what it sounds like when you actually do get an IP address on. So I'm just going to press and hold it down. So I'm holding it. Then I release the button and press it again once quickly. Okay, so that's giving me the IP address of that particular unit that's just been plugged in to a normal network. So again, all I did was I held, pushed and held the call button down. You heard the series of beeps once we got that. I just released it and pressed it once more quickly and then the uh, the I-10 played me the, its IP address. And of course, method three is you can access your DHCP on the network and see what MAC uh, search for the MAC address and uh, find what IP has been allocated. Now, just one little point. If there is no DHCP and it's all gone static, once the unit is powered up correctly, if you put it under PoE, PoE and it can't find a DHCP, the uh, I-10 is going to default to 192.168.1.128. So if you set your uh, PC LAN port to 192.168.1.200, for example, you can then browse and look for the default port of 128 and then you can either change it to a fixed IP address or set it up as per your network. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at the uh, the browsing once we've connected up to the I-10. We'll go and have a quick uh, look through the browsing. Okay, so we enter the IP address of the I-10 into our browser. Press enter and this is what you will get coming up. To log in, it's lowercase admin as the user and admin as the password. Log in. And here's the main programming interface for the actual i10 door phone. Now I'm not going to go in great detail about this, it's just to give you a bit of a look and a feel. We'll just quickly run through the various pages. You've got your system status page here with all the networking, etc. You can set up your accounts um, page here for your user accounts or administration accounts, etc. Uh, we've got an uh, upgrade here page so we can uh, upgrade a, um, a file if we so wish, like so. Um, open now that's got a fake path set up to the file that's on your PC and we can click upgrade unit will upgrade and then restart and that should be done got your auto provision off and off, uh, settings etc here you can run through them we've got an FDMS tab now this is a um, fanville management um, platform uh, we're still testing it and not, it's not ready for release just yet but uh, contact us if you need more information or want to talk about that got tools in regards to syslog etc. I would point out this um, area here this is a uh, web capture through the phone so like all voice over IP devices uh, if there is a problem with the network um, or something's not working quite right it's always going to display on the endpoint e.g. the phone or the intercom okay and again like all voice over IP devices 
you can't just assume that it's going to be the end device. We have to do a capture, and we'd do that using either Wireshark or on the Fanvil. This is a nice simple way of doing it. We just simply press the start, it all start waiting, etc., and then it'll actually start downloading the information from the unit. But I'll just stop that, won't get that going too much. And then we've got the reboot of the phone. We kick into the network side, and um, you've got your basic settings service port, your VPNs, and your advanced section there. Okay, let's kick into the line. Now this is your SIP registration. It is a um, two-line uh, phone. Now any other little point I want to point out here, see these little question marks here? If we click on these, these will give you a description of what actually the, um, the program interface is looking for in regards to information. It's got a general description down the side here of uh, what that section does, but all of this is just additional information per, per line item. Just click on the question mark. Uh, we've got Hotspot. This is a really cool little feature. Um, we're going to be doing a special um, introduction to this one later. But essentially, if you can imagine like you've got a hotel room and you've got two phones. Um, let's say we've got a, a Fanville H5 in the main room and we've got an H2 in the bathroom. We only got one SIP registration though, but we want both phones to be able to ring and both phones to be able to ring out. <coughs> so using the hotspot that enables the um, the master phone, e.g. in well, the example I gave you could be the H5, um, to be the master and the H2 would be a slave or registered to the, um, the master phone. So you're only using one SIP registrations to multiple phones. Off the top of my head, it's around about six phones you can actually set up for, but again, we're going to have, be having a hotspot um, presentation on that just separately. Have a, or just watch the space. We'll then click into the uh, the basic settings of the um, from the line side. If you go to the intercom, now we're talking about um, various extra intercom ac actions, the uh, the multimedia, what codecs going to use, the RTP control, that type of thing. Multicast, again the i10 is multicast compatible and can be paged through, okay, and or can actually initialize a multicast. For example, um, we might have a, um, a uh, in a warehouse, or so imagine a big large uh, retail sales warehouse, we don't have the mobile devices running around because the staff keep breaking them or losing them, but they need to occasionally do some paging across the um, shop's PA. Um, using the IW30s, etc. So they could actually have these, the I10, as a call point. So when they press the call button, instead of ringing an extension, it'll actually, while they press and hold it down, it'll initialize, initiate a um, paging. So they can, they, they can talk into the um, I10 and page across the shop's PA. Just another little example for it. Uh, 10 zones with priorities, etc. Um, actions, time and date. To set it up, set up your, your time zone, etc. Uh, synchronization with uh, SNTP, etc. Tones. Um, only suggestion on this is I like the UK personally, um, but uh, some people just leave it at default. Um, again, your choice on that one. Uh, call list. This is basically for um, restricting incoming calls and phone numbers and restricting outgoing calls. It's basically a blacklist and whitelist scenario. Your web dial. This I like for testing. I must admit. Um, so really, what it what it does is that we can um, say have the phone dial a phone number. So if I want to check um, um, the call alone ID or something coming from the phone, we've got a little bit of a problem with that. I can actually remote into the phone, dial my office number or my cell phone number, and tell it to dial, and it will actually dial my number, and I can. Um, check what's going on etc. Another little handy thing you might like. It's got the function keys here. Now you'll notice there's three of them. On the uh, i10 and the i10V um, there's only one button but there is a um, another model that we're looking at um, which has got three buttons. So this is this is why and basically you just set the, the key up to be whatever you want it to be. Um, more options and advanced settings for the function key. Got your security, you can web filter out address, trusted certificates, um, device certificates, and of course your firewall. Um, the phone is uh, TLS 1.2. Uh, we've got a number of, I've just been working through um, 
the Fanville range with one of the telcos we've got, and they basically um, are loading the certificate up and um, authenticating through for that. So, again, not an option for some people, but it is an option for others. So, just um, if you've got any queries on that one, just let us know. I've got our device log. This is again part of its diagnostics, uh, and essentially we can start it and the uh, phone will now start diagnosing everything that is actually doing. Um, so I've just pressed a button on the phone there. It's got dial tone, it's not programmed, and, and so it's just giving us events, etc. of what's happening. When you finish with it, you can just save it and send it to us if need be. Only used if, if there is something going wrong. And then you've got your security settings. Um, your ringtone durations, your input settings in regards to the um, the trigger. This is for um, high and low triggering output settings for the relays, etc. Um, and what you want to do with it. Okay, so that's pretty much the browser side of things. And finally, really, what can we connect the i10 through to? The i10 unit is a standard. Uh, SIP compatible unit can pretty much connect to anything that is providing SIP, but it has got certification on any number of IP um, on premise IP PBXs and, and um, cloud environments. There's a few examples down here. Uh, some of you might recognize the ASTAR, um, there's Broadsoft there as well, the Epigee, um, NEC, etc., um, as well as the, the Max and Com scenario. Um, so again, lo local or cloud-based, and we can also use um, voice over IP trunks, SIP servers, and you actually also have peer-to-peer uh, -peer options, so we don't actually need uh, in a more simple environment or um, environment that doesn't have a, um, a SIP um, IPPBX or even a cloud option, we can actually have it stand, setting uh, standalone, and it actually will be pointing towards the IP addresses of each device calling um, and all video calling whatever it needs to be doing so that is another option for you so that's about it um, hope this helped it just is just a bit of a taste to um, prepare you before you start um, opening up your first i10 if you've got any queries questions please contact us and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you out thanks for your time